1. A Farmer and a Baker Once upon a time, a farmer and a baker lived in the same small American village. They became friends and developed a good bond. One day, Baker asked the farmer for regular supply of some butter for his bakery. These two men made a friendly arrangement in place, where the farmer would sell a pound of butter to the baker each day. One morning, after several weeks of buying a pound of butter from the farmer, the baker suspected that the baker was cheating him and that he didn't give him a pound of butter, so he decided to weigh the butter to see if he was receiving the correct amount. When he measured the butter, to his surprise, he discovered that the farmer had supplied him less butter than he'd paid for. Angry about the unfairness, he decided to file a complaint against the farmer and took the farmer to court. The judge confronted the farmer with the accusation. At the hearing, the judge asked the farmer whether he used any measure to weigh the butter. Your Honor, I am but a lowly farmer and do not own a proper measure. I simply use an old-fashioned scale, he replied. How do you weight the butter then, inquired the judge. The farmer replied, Your Honor, long before the baker started buying butter from my farm, I've been buying a pound loaf of bread from him. Every day when the baker brings bread for me, I put it on the scale and then measure out the same weight in butter to supply him in return. If anyone is to be blamed, it is the baker. Turns out that the baker was getting what he was giving. So, if the baker is not getting a pound of butter, he is also not giving a pound of bread as he promised. What is the moral of the inspirational story? In life, always keep your word and deliver for what you have promised. This develops your credibility in the society. The more honest you are, the easier for the other people to trust you. Honesty is always the best route, especially if you want others to be honest with you as well. Situations can turn around to 180 degree anytime. Your karma play an important role in life. We get back in life what we give to others. If you are being dishonest and disloyal, don't be surprised if the same will happen to you one day from your business partners and or friends. Be kind and fair to others and you'll enjoy the rewards. 2. Butterfly Cocoon one beautiful morning, a young man was taking a stroll around his garden when he noticed a cocoon of a butterfly on a leaf. He observed a small opening appearing in the cocoon and a butterfly trying to come out of it. Thrilled to see a fantastic transformation of nature, he watched the butterfly for several hours as it struggled to force its body through a little hole in its cocoon. After a while, the butterfly seemed to stop making any progress. It was struggling so hard to get out. It appeared as if it had gotten as far as it could and could go no further. So, looking at the struggle, the kind-hearted young man decided to help the butterfly. He grabbed a pair of scissors and then snipped off the remaining bit of the cocoon. With the cocoon cut open, the butterfly no longer had to struggle and emerged easily. However, as it emerged, the man noticed it had a swollen body and small shriveled wings. The man was happy that he made the butterfly come out of its cocoon without much struggle. He continued to watch the butterfly, expecting that, at any moment, the wings would dry out, enlarge and expand to support the swollen body, which would contract in time. Unfortunately, neither its wings expanded nor the swollen body reduced. In fact, the butterfly spent the rest of its very short life crawling around the ground with a swollen body and small wings, unable to fly. Although with good intentions, the man hindered the growth of the butterfly. What the man in his kindness and haste did not understand was that the restricting cocoon and the struggle required for the butterfly to get through the tiny opening were nature's way of forcing fluid from the body of the butterfly into its wings so that it would be ready for flight once it achieved its freedom from the cocoon. Here's a powerful life lesson this story teaches. Our struggles always give us strength. Sometimes struggles and challenges are exactly what we need to grow in our life. Like, the struggle to get out of the cocoon gives a butterfly its beautiful wings. Struggles in our life make us stronger and resilient. If we were allowed to go through our life without any obstacles, it would cripple us. 
we would not be as strong as we could have been. Trying to avoid struggle, taking the easy path, will only lead to a harder life, to greater struggles later on. Another strong message the story convey is how to do parenting. Quite often, we protect our kids from the difficulties at early age and help them. For example, completing the homework on their behalf, keeping them safe from tough weather conditions, now allowing them to explore the world due to fear, etc. All these things make them weak. Children who face tough time and difficult situations at early age become more strong, be ready for bigger challenges. 3. An 87-year-old college student named Rose. The first day of school, our professor introduced himself and challenged us to get to know someone we didn't already know. I stood up to look around when a gentle hand touched my shoulder. I turned around to find a wrinkled little old lady beaming up at me with a smile that lit up her entire being. She said, Hi, handsome. My name is Rose. I'm 87 years old. Can I give you a hug? I laughed and enthusiastically responded, Of course you may. And she gave me a giant squeeze. Why are you in college at such a young, innocent age? I asked. She jokingly replied, I'm here to meet a rich husband, get married, and have a couple of kids. No, seriously, I asked. I was curious what may have motivated her to be taking on this challenge at her age. I always dreamed of having a college education, and now I'm getting one, she told me. After class, we walked to the student union building and shared a chocolate milkshake. We became instant friends. Every day for the next three months, we would leave class together and talk nonstop. I was always mesmerized listening to this time machine as she shared her wisdom and experience with me. Over the course of the year, Rose became a campus icon and she easily made friends wherever she went. She loved to dress up and she reveled in the attention bestowed upon her from the other students. She was living it up. At the end of the semester, we invited Rose to speak at our football banquet. I'll never forget what she taught us. She was, introduced and stepped up to the podium. As she began to deliver her prepared speech, she dropped her three-by-five cards on the floor. Frustrated and a little embarrassed, she leaned into the microphone and simply said, I'm sorry I'm so jittery. I gave up beer for Lent and this whiskey is killing me. I'll never get my speech back in order, so let me just tell. You what I know. As we laughed, she cleared her throat and began. We do not stop playing because we are old. We grow old because we stop playing. There are only four secrets to staying young, being happy, and achieving success. You have to laugh and find humor every day. You've got to have a dream. When you lose your dreams, you die. We have so many people walking around who are dead and don't even know it. There is a huge difference between growing older and growing up. If you are 19 years old and lie in bed for one full year and don't do one productive thing, you will turn 20 years old. If I am 87 years old and stay in bed for a year and never do anything, I will turn 88. Anybody can grow older. That doesn't take any talent or ability. The idea is to grow up by always finding opportunity in change. Have no regrets. The elderly usually don't have regrets for what we did, but rather for things we did not do. The only people who fear death are those with regrets. She concluded her speech by courageously singing The Rose. She challenged each of us to study the lyrics and live them out in our daily lives. At the year's end, Rose finished the college degree she had begun all those years ago. One week after graduation, Rose died peacefully in her sleep. Over 2,000 college students attended her funeral in tribute to the wonderful woman who taught by example that it's never too late to be all you can possibly be. When you finish reading this, please send this peaceful word of advice to your friends and family. They'll really enjoy it. These words have been passed along in loving memory of Rose. Remember, growing older is mandatory. Growing up is optional. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. 
4. The Coldest Winter It was one of the coldest winters, and many animals were dying because of the cold. The porcupines, realizing the situation, decided to group together to keep each other warm. This was a great way to protect themselves from the cold and keep each of them warm, but the quills of each one wounded their closest companions. After a while, they decided to distance themselves, but they too began to die due to cold. So they had to make a choice, either accept the quills of their companions or choose death. Wisely, they decided to go back to being together. They learned to live with a few wounds caused by their close relationship with their companions to receive the warmth of their togetherness. This way, they were able to survive. 5. Unnecessary Doubts A boy and a girl were playing together. The boy had a collection of beautiful marbles. The girl had some candies with her. The boy offered to give the girl all his marbles in exchange for all her candies. The girl agreed. The boy gave all the marbles to the girl but secretly kept the biggest and the most beautiful marble for himself. The girl gave him all her candies as she had promised. That night, the girl slept peacefully. But the boy couldn't sleep as he kept wondering if the girl had hidden some more tasty candies from him the way he had hidden his best marble. If you don't give your 100% in a relationship, you'll always keep doubting if the other person has given their 100%. 6. Three Feet from Gold During the gold rush, a man who had been mining in Colorado for several months quit his job, as he hadn't struck gold yet and the work was becoming tiresome. He sold his equipment to another man who resumed mining where it had been left off. The new miner was advised by his engineer that there was gold only three feet away from where the first miner stopped digging. The engineer was right, which means the first miner was a mere three feet away from striking gold before he quit. The morale. When things start to get hard, try to persevere through the adversity. Many people give up on following their dreams because the work becomes too difficult, tedious, or tiresome, but often, you're closer to the finish line than you may think, and if you push just a little harder, you will succeed. 7. A Cup and Coffee A group of highly established alumni got together to visit their old university professor. The conversation among them soon turned into complaints about their stressful work and life. The professor went to his kitchen and returned with a large pot of coffee and an assortment of cups, including porcelain, plastic, glass, crystal, some plain-looking, some expensive, and some exquisite. The professor told them to help themselves with the coffee. After all the students had a cup of coffee in their hands, the professor said, Did you notice all the nice-looking cups are taken? and only the plain, inexpensive ones are left behind. While it is normal for everyone to want the best for themselves, but that is the source of problems and stress in your life. The cup itself adds no quality to the coffee. In most of the cases, it's just more expensive and hides what we drink. The professor continued, What all of you wanted was coffee, not the cup, but all of you consciously went for good-looking, expensive cups and then began eyeing on each other's cups. Let's consider that life is the coffee, and the jobs, houses, cars, things, money, and position are the cups. However, the type of cup we have does not define or change the quality of our lives. Sometimes, we fail to enjoy the coffee by concentrating only on the cup we have. Being happy doesn't mean everything's around you is perfect. It means you've decided to see beyond the imperfections and find peace. And the peace lies within you, not in your career, jobs, or the houses you have. 8. Changing Vision There once lived a wealthy man who was bothered by severe eye pain. He consulted many physicians, but none could treat his ache. He went through a myriad of treatment procedures, but his pain persisted with more vigor. He looked for every available solution for his pain and approached a wise monk renowned for treating various illnesses. 
The monk carefully observed the man's eyes and offered a very peculiar solution. The monk told the man to concentrate only on the green color for a few weeks and avoid other colors. The man was desperate to get rid of the pain and was determined, ready to go to any extent. The wealthy man appointed a group of painters, purchased green paint barrels, and directed that every object his eye was likely to fall to be painted green. After a few weeks, the monk came to visit the man to follow up on the man's progress. As the monk walked towards the man's room, the appointed painter poured a bucket of green paint on the monk. The monk could see that the whole corridor and the room were painted green. As the monk inquired about the reason for painting everything green, the wealthy man said that he was only following the monk's advice to look at only green. Hearing this, the monk laughed and said, If only you had purchased a pair of green spectacles worth just a few dollars, you could have saved a large share of your fortune. You cannot paint the world green. Let us change our vision, and the world will appear accordingly. 9. Start with yourself. The following words were written on the tomb of an Anglican bishop in the crypts of Westminster Abbey. When I was young and free, and my imagination had no limits, I dreamed of changing the world. As I grew older and wiser, I discovered the world would not change, so I shortened my sights somewhat and decided to change only my country. But it, too, seemed immovable. As I grew into my twilight years, in one last desperate attempt, I settled for changing only my family, those closest to me, but alas, they would have none of it. And now, as I lie on my deathbed, I suddenly realize, if I had only changed my life first, then by example, I would have changed my family. From their inspiration and encouragement, I would then have been able to better my country, and who knows? I may have even changed the world. 10. University Exams Here goes a funny story to make you smile. One night, four university students decided to stay out late. As they were partying and having a great time, they paid no interest in the test they had the next day. Obviously, they didn't study. In the morning, they felt slightly tired and full of regrets. As a team, they created a master plan. They covered themselves in the dirt and headed to the lecturer's office. They told him they had been to a wedding, and on the way back, their tire had gone flat and they had to push their car back to campus. The lecturer willfully listened to their tale and agreed that they could retake the test in a few days. The students were delighted and believed they had got away with it. On the day of the test, all students were separated. They were then given the test, which shockingly had one question, which tire burst? The takeaway of the story, always be honest. Don't lie to get out of something you could have been prepared for. It's also worth stating that these students could have made a much more reasonable decision. 11. Bethany Hamilton We have another true story. Bethany Hamilton was a surfing prodigy and was destined for extraordinary things. When she was 13 years old, the Hawaii native was attacked by a tiger shark and lost her entire left arm. However, at this moment when most people would completely give up, she didn't lose sight of her dreams. She has always wanted to be a professional surfer and was back on the board less than a month after the accident. Not only is this admirably brave, but it also shows that anything is possible. Bethany Hamilton is now in her 20s and a pro surfer. The takeaway of the story, no matter what, believe in yourself, even when no one does. There we have it, the top 10 most inspirational short stories. Hopefully, some of these have persuaded you to keep trying, Always be kind and find new ways to look at life. 12. The Baby Camel and His Mother Once upon a time, there was a baby camel, Calf, lived with her mother. It was beautiful weather one Sunday afternoon. The mother and the baby camel were lying around under a tree. The baby camel was very curious about the things and always tried to learn from her mother. The calf put his curiosity cap on and asked, Mother, 
may I ask you some questions? The mother replied, Sure. Why not my son? Tell me what is bothering you. Getting a positive nod from her mother, the baby camel asked, Why do camels have humps? The mother camel smiled and replied to the innocent question of calf, We, camels, are desert animals. We spend our life in deserts. In desert areas there is scarcity of water. We have the humps to store water so that we can survive for many days with very little water. The baby camel was very happy after getting the answer from her mother. He thought for a moment and asked second question. Okay, mother, why are our legs long and we have large, soft, and rounded feet? The mama replied, The camels are called ships of the desert. The camel's long legs helps to keep their bodies further away from the hot ground and they have large, soft feet so they won't sink into the sand. They are meant in such a way so that we can walk properly in the desert. With these legs, we can move around the desert better than anyone does. The baby camel paused. After a beat, the baby camel asked, Mom, I would like to know why do we have long eyelashes? They are so long that sometimes they get in my way and I am not able to see properly. The mother camel responded, My son, those long, thick eyelashes are your protective cover. Those long, thick eyelashes protect your eyes from the desert sand when it blows in the wind. The baby thought for a while. Then he said, I see. So the hump is to store water when we are in the desert. The legs are for walking through the desert, and these eyelashes protect my eyes from the desert. The mom replied, Exactly, my son. You got everything correctly. The baby camel looked like a bit confused now. He asked, If God has given us so many talents to live in deserts, then what the hell are we doing in the zoo? This time Mother Camel went speechless. The story of a mother and a curious baby camel tells more of how we can be useless living, work, and even learning in the wrong environment. Skills, knowledge, talents, abilities, and experiences are only useful if you are at the right place. There's no possibility of growing and excelling in an environment that limit your skills, knowledge, and potentials. 13. 100 Camels Long back, a young boy named James lived in a deserted village located in the vicinity of a desert. He was an educated person and doing business in surrounding areas. He had a beautiful wife and cute son in his family. But he was not happy with his life. Every now and then he had to face a new problem in life. He always used to get worried and kept thinking about the problems. Once a saint from distant city of James came along with caravan of 100 camels outside his village and decided to stay there for a few days. Soon there were talks all around the nearby villages that saint solves the problems of people with his wisdom. People began to reach him with their problems. James also came to know about this, and he also decided to visit the saint. When James reached the place, there was a huge crowd of hundreds of people. After waiting for long time, James' turn came for meeting with Saint. He asked Saint, Holy man, I am very unhappy with my life. All the time the problems surround me. Sometimes the business tension is there. Sometimes family problems and sometimes I am worried about my health. Please tell such a solution that all the problems from my life come to an end and I can live happily. Saint smiled and said, Son, it is very late today. I will give your answer tomorrow morning. But will you do a small thing for me? James agreed to do the needful for the saint. The saint said, Look, son, there are hundred camels in our caravan. The caretaker of them has fallen sick today. I want you to take care of them tonight. Just ensure that all the camels sit down and take proper rest. When all the hundred camels will sit down, then you can also go and sleep. After guiding James, the saint went to his tent. The next morning, saint met James and asked, My son, I hope you had quality sleep last night. James felt miserable and replied, No, I could not sleep even for a single moment. I tried a lot, but I could not make all the camels sitting down. 
Saint smiled and said, I knew this would be the case. So far, it has never happened that all these camels sit together, James asked in the voice of anguish. Then why did you ask me to do this? Saint replied, Son, did you notice what have you experienced last night? No matter how much you tried, all the camels did not sit together. If you ensured the camels on one side have sat, then on other side you would have found few others camel standing. Saint continued, Similarly, when you solve one problem, then for some reason or other you will find problems keep coming in life. As long as you will live, these problems will keep arising, sometimes less and sometimes more. So what should we do? James asked curiously. Saint replied, Despite these problems, learn to enjoy the life. If you noticed what happened last night, there were many camels which sat down by themselves, for many of you had to put some effort. But many camels did not sit even after your enormous efforts. James confirmed that exactly same happened last night. Saint smiled and said, And if you went back after some time, you would have found that some of camels who did not sat even after your lot of efforts have now sat themselves. James replied, Yes, it happened last night. Saint asked, Did you understand something from this? James did not have any answer and was looking towards Saint with curious eyes. The Saint continued, Problems are like camels. Some problems get solved themselves. Some get solved when you put some effort and some problems do not get solved even after trying your best. Trust the timings of your life and leave such problems on time. At right time, these problems themselves will come to an end. James was stunned with camel-sitting metaphor. Now he had altogether new perspective towards problems of life. As Saint mentioned in this short motivational story, if there is life, then some problems will always exist. But this does not mean that you keep thinking about them all day long. If that happens, then the caretaker of the camels can never sleep. Put your best efforts to solve the problems. Even after your best efforts, if few problems are not in your control, keep such problems aside and enjoy life. Live the life mindful way and have peace of mind. When their time comes, those problems will get solved themselves. Learn to thank God for the blessings He had already given. Sufferings will diminish itself. 14. You are made to fly high. Long time ago, someone gifted two eaglets, baby eagles, to a king. The breed of eaglets was very good, and the king had never seen such magnificent eaglets before. The king was very pleased with the gift and decided to hire an experienced caretaker for them. After some time, King saw that both of them were quite big, and now they are looking fantastic than earlier. The King said to the man taking care of the eagles, I want to see their flight. You signal them to fly in the sky. The man did the same. Both eagles started fluttering as soon as they saw the signal. But where one eagle was touching the heights of the sky, the other flew for some seconds and returned to the branch where it was earlier sitting the same branch from where he started flying. After seeing this, the king felt something strange. He became curious to know the reason of the contrasting behavior of eagles. King asked the caretaker, What's the matter where an eagle is flying so well the other one is not trying to fly? The caretaker replied, Yes, this is the problem from the beginning with this eagle. He does not leave this branch. Both the eagles were adorable to King, and he desperately wanted to see the second eagle, too, flying high in the sky. Next day he announced in the whole state that the person who will manage to fly higher this eagle will be rewarded with heavy prizes. After announcement, many intellectual and knowledgeable persons came and tried to apply the knowledge they had to make the eagle fly high. But no one was successful. Even after the passage of a couple of weeks, there was no improvement in the eagle. He used to fly a little bit and put it back and sit down. The king, too, lost hope and almost gave up. Then one day something strange happened. The king saw that both of them were flying high in the sky. He did not believe on his eyes and immediately called the caretaker. 
The caretaker informed the king, Yes, the second eagle is also flying high in the sky. One man has been successful in making the second eagle fly high. The king asked the caretaker to bring the person who had done this feat. Next day, he was then brought before the king where the king was eagerly waiting with the promised prize. The king came to know during interactions that the man was a simple farmer. He said, I simply cut the branch, the branch on which he had an habit of sitting. After offering the gold currencies and his reward, the king said, I am very pleased with you. Just tell me how did you do this which the great scholars and highly qualified people could not do. The farmer said, Your Highness, I am a simple farmer. I don't have knowledge like scholars. I just simply cut down the branch on which the eagle had in habit of sitting. As there was no branch, he had no option but to fly, and which he did very well. Just as the eagle didn't realize that he could actually fly so high and always liked to remain on the branch. We also sometimes underestimate ourselves and don't realize our true potential. In life, we become habituated of doing certain things. We keep doing what we are doing and we forget about our high flying capacity. We are all made to fly high in life. But like eagle, we also prefer to remain on the branch of our comfort zone. After the farmer had cut the branch, the eagle had no option but to come out of his comfort zone and start working. Only then he realized its true potential. Therefore, to fly high in life and unlock our true potential, it is necessary that we cut the branch of comfort zone, which is becoming a hindrance in success. Great things in life are only achieved out of the comfort zone. The story also gives a powerful message that sometimes we can begin our flight with some gentle training, like happened in the case of First Eagle. Other times, we need something much more drastic, like our branch cut off, so that we have no other choice but to flap our wings and fly, like happened in the case of Second Eagle. Just like a ship is not made for the harbor, and the eagle is not designed to sit on the branch, you and I weren't created for a mediocre life. You are made to fly high in life. There is more to life than to settle for the familiar, the mundane, the comfort zones, or the safe zones. 15. A pound of butter. You may have heard people talk about a pound of butter, which is a story about honesty. The story introduces a farmer who sold one pound of butter to a baker on a regular basis. One day, the baker wanted to check if he was getting the right amount. He quickly realized he wasn't and angrily took the farmer to court. When in court, the judge asked the farmer if he was using any unit of measure to weigh the butter. The farmer stated that, though he had a scale, he didn't have a proper measure. Baffled, the judge asked how the farmer could possibly measure the amount of butter without a proper form of measurement. The farmer replied, stating that the baker had been selling a pound of bread to the farmer every single day. Almost like an exchange, the farmer used his scales and gave the baker the same amount of butter as the baker gave him bread. It soon dawned on the judge that the baker had been lying to the farmer. In turn, the farmer had mimicked the weight and accidentally scammed the baker. The takeaway of the story. In life, you have to be honest. If you try to deceive others, you will be deceived back, almost like you get what you give. Honesty is always crucial in terms of inspiration. Don't attempt to make a little bit more money while lying to others. To gain respect and be treated with fairness and respect, you have to respect and be honest with others. Like the farmer, you will always prevail if you're completely honest with good intentions. Also, if you feel like the world is against you or something is going wrong, honesty and innocence will prevail, just like in the farmer's case. 16. The Man Who Planted Trees by Gian Giono For a human character to reveal truly exceptional qualities, one must have the good fortune to be able to observe its performance over many years. Summary the Man Who Planted Trees is a short story by Gian Giono, first published in 1953. 
The story is a fictional account of a man named Elzear Bouffier, who lives in a remote valley in the French Alps and spends his life planting trees. Over the course of several decades, Bouffier single-handedly transforms the barren and desolate landscape into a lush and thriving forest, which has a profound impact on the surrounding environment and community. Theme The Man Who Planted Trees highlights the power of individual action and the importance of environmental stewardship. The story emphasizes the transformative power of nature and highlights the impact that even one person can have on the world. Moral of the story The story shows that small actions can have a big impact on the world. It serves as a reminder of the importance of preserving and protecting the natural world and of the power of individual action. It also encourages readers to take responsibility for the environment and to work toward a more sustainable and harmonious relationship with the natural world. 17. The Parable of the Good Samaritan From the Bible But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Summary the parable of the Good Samaritan is a story told by Jesus in the Bible, found in Luke 10, 25-37. It tells the story of a traveler who is beaten, robbed, and left for dead on the side of the road. A priest and a Levite, who were both considered to be religious leaders, passed by the man without helping. Then a Samaritan, who was an outsider and often looked down upon, stopped to help the man, tending to his wounds and providing for his needs. The Samaritan put the traveler on his donkey and brought him to an innkeeper, who he paid to look after him. Theme The parable of the Good Samaritan is meant to teach people about the call to love and serve others, regardless of differences in background or status. It emphasizes the importance of acting with compassion kindness, and generosity toward those in need. Moral of the story. The parable shows readers that everyone is our neighbor and we are called to love and serve others without discrimination or prejudice, even to those who are considered an enemy. 18. Shoe Dog by Phil Knight The cowards never started and the weak died along the way. That leaves us, ladies and gentlemen. Us. Summary. Shoe Dog is a memoir written by Phil Knight, the co-founder of Nike, Inc. Published in 2016, this story is an inspirational depiction of Nike, from its humble beginnings as a small startup company to a global giant in the athletic shoe industry. Just out of business school, Phil Knight borrowed $50 from his father and launched what would become one of the world's most iconic and profitable brands. Theme. The motivational story of Phil Knight highlights themes of perseverance and determination. Knight and his team faced numerous challenges throughout the company's journey, including financial difficulties, legal battles, and intense competition. However, they persevered and never gave up, ultimately achieving great success. Moral of the story. Shoe Dog shows that success comes from a combination of passion, hard work, and perseverance. Knight's story is an inspiring reminder that no matter how difficult the road may seem, if you believe in your vision and are willing to put in the effort, you can achieve great things. 19. Empty Your Cup Once there was a university professor who was known as an extremely knowledgeable person. There were many research named to him in the field of philosophy. The professor had keen interest in Zen Buddhism practices and wanted to learn more about it. He visited a famous Japanese Zen master to learn the pearls of Zen wisdom. When he reached the Zen master's place, his disciples took him to the room of Zen master. Zen master's physical appearance was affable and his spirit was lofty. His face was shimmering and a lot of positive energy could be felt around him. After welcoming his visitor, the Zen master asked the professor the reason of his visit. 
The professor told him the motive of visit. I have come to ask you to teach me about Zen. The Zen master asked the professor, You are known for your knowledge everywhere. Please share something with me. The professor started telling about his research in different fields one by one. After some time, he started sharing his knowledge about Zen. The Zen master listened to him silently for an hour. Zen master interrupted and asked the professor if he would like to enjoy some tea. Knowing he should accept, the professor smiled and thanked the Zen master for his generosity. One of the Zen master's disciples disappeared and then quickly reappeared with two cups and some steaming tea. The master started pouring the tea into the cup and smiled towards professor. The professor kept continuing sharing his knowledge on Zen to the master. The Zen master was pouring the tea slowly, slowly, and the cup got filled fully. But he did not stop and kept pouring the tea in the cup. The tea started overflowing on the table. The professor noticed it and continued to watch as it overflowed. Soon the tea started falling on the robes of professor and he could no longer restrain himself. The professor put his hand up and exclaimed, Stop! Can't you see? The cup is full already. It's overflowing. No more will go in. The Zen master did not stop and still he kept pouring tea. The professors got angry and rushed towards the gate. The Zen master called him, Professor, please listen. The professor did not stop. The master ran behind him and stopped him. The Zen master calmly explained him the reason behind kept pouring the tea in the cup, even after it overflowed. Zen master said, You are here to ask questions, yet you come full. You have your own ideas and have no space. Until you have room for more, you will not accept new information. You are like that cup of tea. How can I show you Zen unless you first empty your cup? This classic Zen master story communicate few very strong messages that you need to stay humble, open ourselves to new ideas, be willing to change your preconceptions, and be receptive to new learning. Even though you may be full of knowledge, you should always be open to the fact that there is still more to learn. You need to learn the art of unlearning, empty your cup, so that you can learn new things. Preconceived ideas and prejudices always prevent us from seeing the truth. Empty your cup so that it may be filled. Become devoid to gain totality. Tilda Bruce Lee This inspirational story also shows the approach we should have in conflict resolution and communication. We should allow other person to speak and express his, her grievances or point of view. If you will start telling your concerns, the person at other end will never listen what you have to say. First, empty his cup and listen his, her concerns. Once it's done, it will only help you understand his, her view, but also help you to make him, her listen what you want to communicate. It emphasizes the importance of listening and communication. The Zen parable also shows how much ego plays a role in our social interactions. We feel we know everything and we are not ready to listen others. Quiet often we tune out others' words, thinking instead about what we are going to say next. We must come out of our ego and there is always a new way to look at things, a new rock to turn over, and different viewpoints to consider. 20. Rich Dad and Wise Son In a big country, a man was living along with his family. The man had abundance of wealth. He had a son, and one day he took his son on a trip to the country. The dad's sole purpose was to show his son how do poor people live, so the son could appreciate his good fortune. During their journey, they reached in a small village. There they spent a couple of days and nights on the farm of what would be considered a very poor family. On their return from their trip, dad asked to his son, how was the trip, my son? The son replied with an excitement, It was a great trip, Dad. The rich dad asked, Did you see how the poor people live? The purpose of journey was to make you understand how fortunate you are having born in such a wealthy family. Oh yeah, said the son, and smiled towards his father. 
The father asked, So my dear son, tell me, what did you learn from the trip? The wise son answered, Dad, I notice a lot of things on poor people living. I saw that we have one dog and they had three. We have a swimming pool that reaches to the middle of our garden and they have a river that has no end. We have imported designer lanterns in our garden and on our terrace and they have the stars at night. Our patio reaches to the front yard and they have the whole horizon. The father got a bit confused with his son answers. The son had continued, We have a small piece of land to live on and they have fields which go beyond our sight. We have servants who serve us, but they serve others. The wise son's learning did not end yet. The son kept continue express his trip experiences. We buy our food, but they grow theirs. We have walls around our property to protect us. They have friends to protect them. We spend out free time with television and mobiles. They spend their free time with family and relatives. The son summed up his experience on trip to the village. Thanks, Dad, for showing me how poor we are. The wise son's response left the rich dad speechless. This short, inspiring story communicates a very powerful message that we should not run after money. Money can buy clothes or gadgets or cars or big house or many other things which gives you comfort. But there are few things which money cannot buy. It's simplicity, love, kindness, compassion, friendships, values, family that makes your lives rich. Most of the people forget what they have in life and concentrate on what they don't have. What is one person's worthless object is another's prized possession. It is all about one's perspective. How does he she look at it? Sometimes it takes the perspective of a child to remind us what's important in life. 21. The White Wolf versus Black Wolf A group of Cherokee children gathered around their grandfather. They were filled with excitement and curiosity. That day, there had been quite a tumultuous conflict between two adults, and their grandfather was called in to mediate. The children were eager to hear what he had to say about it. One of the children in conflict asked a question to the grandfather that was puzzling him. Grandfather, why do people fight? The old man replied, Well, do you know, my child, we all have two wolves inside us. They are in our chest, and these wolves are constantly fighting each other. The eyes of the children had grown big by now. In our chest too, grandfather? asked another child. The grandfather nodded his head in agreement and said, Yes. And in your chest too? asked a third one. The grandfather replied, Yes, in my chest too. The grandfather sure had all the children's attention now. The grandfather continued, There is a white wolf and a black wolf. The black wolf inside us is filled with fear, lies, anger, envy, inferiority, sorrow, regret, jealousy, greed, ego, lust, and arrogance. The white wolf is filled with peace, love, hope, courage, humility, compassion, kindness, empathy, generosity, truth, and faith. And do you know, there is always a terrible fight in between these two wolves. They battle constantly. Then he stopped. There was complete silence, and all children were curiously looking towards him for him. It's the grandson that asked the initial question could not handle the tension any more, broke the silence. But grandfather, which wolf wins? The old Cherokee smiled and replied, That's simple. The one whom we feed the most. If you resonate and realize you will find this world is full of black wolf-dominated people, not only this, if you introspect, you will find that there is always an internal conflict going inside you dominated by the black wolf. Remember our article, Is Your Spotlight on the Black Dots? The brain has a built-in negative bias that causes us to focus on bad things. By giving these negative emotions, black wolf, your headspace, you are fundamentally feeding them. Knowingly or unknowingly, you feed emotions such as fear, inferiority, anger, jealousy, and comparison.
Well, don't worry, you are not alone. As I mentioned above, most of us have a very underdeveloped white wolf. For some people, whilst growing up, it was not often fed by parents or those people in positions of authority, such as teachers. For some others, the corporate and organizational cultures encourage the black wolf. Such surrounding environment leads your white wolf to be weak, skinny, and small. But that doesn't mean it's not possible to change your focus and attention moving forward. You have a choice which wolf you want to feed when experiencing internal conflict. You can stop feeding the black wolf and start feeding the white wolf at any given moment. It's also worth noting that this is something you need to work at constantly. It's true that some people find it more difficult than others to choose the white wolf, but at the end of the day, you can choose to stop feeding the black wolf and start feeding the white wolf. You must be thinking, hey, Invajai, it's that simple to say, but it ain't that easy to implement. 22. The Tortoise and the Hare Once upon a time, a tortoise and a hare had an argument about who was faster. They decided to settle the argument with a race. They agreed on a route and started off the race. The hare shot ahead and ran briskly for some time. Then, seeing that he was far ahead of the tortoise, he thought he'd sit under a tree for some time and relax before continuing the race. He sat under the tree and soon fell asleep. The tortoise plodding on overtook him and soon finished the race, emerging as the undisputed champ. The hare woke up and realized that he'd lost the race. The morale of the story is that slow and steady wins the race. This is the version of the story that we've all grown up with. But then recently, someone told me a more interesting version of this story. The story continues. The hare was disappointed at losing the race and he did some soul searching. He realized that he'd lost the race only because he had been overconfident, careless, and lax. If he had not taken things for granted, there's no way the tortoise could have beaten him. So he challenged the tortoise to another race. The tortoise agreed. This time, the hare went all out and ran without stopping from start to finish. He won by several miles. Fast and consistent will always beat the slow and steady. If you have two people in your organization, one slow, methodical, and reliable, and the other fast and still reliable at what he does, the fast and reliable chap will consistently climb the organizational ladder faster than the slow, methodical chap. It's good to be slow and steady, but it's better to be fast and reliable. But the story doesn't end here. The story continues. The tortoise did some thinking this time and realized that there's no way he can beat the hare in a race the way it was currently formatted. He thought for a while and then challenged the hare to another race, but on a slightly different route. The hare agreed. They started off. In keeping with his self-made commitment to be consistently fast, the hare took off and ran at top speed until he came to a broad river. The finishing line was a couple of kilometers on the other side of the river. The hare sat there wondering what to do. In the meantime, the tortoise trundled along, got into the river, swam to the opposite bank, continued walking, and finished the race. First, identify your core competency and then change the playing field to suit your core competency. For an example, in an organization, if you are a good speaker, Make sure you create opportunities to give presentations that enable the senior management to notice you. If your strength is analysis, make sure you do some sort of research, make a report, and send it upstairs. Working to your strengths will not only get you noticed, but will also create opportunities for growth and advancement. The story still hasn't ended. The hare and the tortoise by this time had become pretty good friends, and they did some thinking together. Both realized that the last race could have been run much better. So they decided to race once again, but to run as a team this time. They started off, and this time the hare carried the tortoise till the river bank. There, in the river, the tortoise took over and swam across with the hare on his back. On the opposite bank, the hare again carried the tortoise and they reached the finishing line together. 
they both felt a greater sense of satisfaction than they'd felt earlier. 23. Value A popular speaker started off a seminar by holding up a $20 bill. A crowd of 200 had gathered to hear him speak. He asked, Who would like this dollar twenty bill? 200 hands went up. He said, I am going to give this $20 to one of you, but first, let me do this. He crumpled the bill up. He then asked, Who still wants it? All 200 hands were still raised. Well, he replied, what if I do this? Then he dropped the bill on the ground and stomped on it with his shoes. He picked it up and showed it to the crowd. The bill was all crumpled and dirty. Now who still wants it? All the hands still went up. My friends, I have just showed you a very important lesson. No matter what I did to the money, you still wanted it because it did not decrease in value. It was still worth $1.20. Many times in our lives, life crumples us and grinds us into the dirt. We make bad decisions or deal with poor circumstances. We feel worthless, but no matter what has happened or what will happen, you will never lose your value. You are special. Don't ever forget it. 24. Everyone has a story in life. A 24-year-old boy seeing out from the train's window shouted, Dad, look, the trees are going behind. Dad smiled, and a young couple sitting nearby looked at the 24-year-old's childish behavior with pity. Suddenly, he again exclaimed, Dad, look, the clouds are running with us. The couple couldn't resist and said to the old man, why don't you take your son to a good doctor? The old man smiled and said, I did, and we are just coming from the hospital. My son was blind from birth. He just got his eyes today. Every single person on the planet has a story. Don't judge people before you truly know them. The truth might surprise you. 25. The Queen's Boulder in ancient times, there was a queen who ordered her soldiers to maneuver a boulder into the middle of the main road to and from town. The queen then hid, watching to see who would stop to do the right thing and move it out of the way again. Wealthy merchants and courtiers passed the boulder, barely giving it a second thought. A few of them blamed their queen for not keeping the roads clear, yet none stopped to do anything. One day, a peasant walked along with a sack of vegetables to sell at market. He stopped, laid these down, and then pushed, tugged, huffed, and heaved the stone away. Upon picking up his vegetables, the peasant saw a large purse full of gold and a handwritten note from the queen herself where the boulder had been. The gold was a reward for whoever removed it from the road. Moral of the story... Laziness will never get you anywhere in life. Success almost always takes humility and hard work. 26. A dish of ice cream. In the days when an ice cream sundae cost much less, a 10-year-old boy entered a hotel coffee shop and sat at a table. A waitress put a glass of water in front of him. How much is an ice cream sundae? 50 cents, replied the waitress. The little boy pulled his hand out of his pocket and studied a number of coins in it. How much is a dish of plain ice cream? he inquired. Some people were now waiting for a table and the waitress was a bit impatient. Thirty-five cents, she said brusquely. The little boy again counted the coins. I'll have the plain ice cream, he said. The waitress brought the ice cream, put the bill on the table and walked away. The boy finished the ice cream paid the cashier, and departed. When the waitress came back, she began wiping down the table and then swallowed hard at what she saw. There, placed neatly beside the empty dish, were 15 cents, her tip. 27. A Very Special Bank Account Imagine you had a bank account that deposited $86,400 each morning. The account carries over no balance from day to day, allows you to keep no cash balance, and every evening cancels whatever part of the amount you had failed to use during the day. What would you do? Draw out every dollar each day. 
We all have such a bank. Its name is time. Every morning, it credits you with 86,400 seconds. Every night, it writes off, as lost, whatever time you have failed to use wisely. It carries over no balance from day to day. It allows no overdraft so you can't borrow against yourself or use more time than you have. Each day, the account starts fresh. Each night, it destroys an unused time. If you fail to use the day's deposits, it's your loss, and you can't appeal to get it back. There is never any borrowing time. You can't take a loan out on your time or against someone else's. The time you have is the time you have, and that is that. Time management is yours to decide how you spend the time. Just as with money, you decide how you spend the money. It is never the case of us not having enough time to do things, but the case of whether we want to do them and where they fall in our priorities. 28. All the difference in the world. Every Sunday morning, I take a light jog around a park near my home. There's a lake located in one corner of the park. Each time I jog by this lake, I see the same elderly woman sitting at the water's edge with a small metal cage sitting beside her. This past Sunday, my curiosity got the best of me, so I stopped jogging and walked over to her. As I got closer, I realized that the metal cage was in fact a small trap. There were three turtles, unharmed, slowly walking around the base of the trap. She had a fourth turtle in her lap that she was carefully scrubbing with a spongy brush. Hello, I said. I see you here every Sunday morning. If you don't mind my nosiness, I'd love to know what you're doing with these turtles. She smiled. I'm cleaning off their shells, she replied. Anything on a turtle's shell, like algae or scum, reduces the turtle's ability to absorb heat and impedes its ability to swim. It can also corrode and weaken the shell over time. Wow, that's really nice of you, I exclaimed. She went on. I spend a couple of hours each Sunday morning relaxing by this lake and helping these little guys out. It's my own strange way of making a difference. But don't most freshwater turtles live their whole lives with algae and scum hanging from their shells? I asked. Yep, sadly they do, she replied. I scratched my head. Well, then don't you think your time could be better spent? I mean, I think your efforts are kind and all, but there are fresh water turtles living in lakes all around the world. And 99% of these turtles don't have kind people like you to help them clean off their shells. So, no offense, but how exactly are your localized efforts here truly making a difference? The woman giggled aloud. She then looked down at the turtle in her lap, scrubbed off the last piece of algae from its shell and said, Sweetie, if this little guy could talk, he'd tell you I just made all the difference in the world. The Moral You can change the world, maybe not all at once, but one person, one animal, and one good deed at a time. Wake up every morning and pretend like what you do makes a difference. It does. 29. How to Hunt a Monkey Do you know how hunters of old used to trap monkeys? A man asked his child. Rather than chasing them up a tree or shooting arrows from below, they'd put a heavy glass jar with a narrow neck on the floor which had the monkey's favorite food inside. They'd then step back and hide, waiting for the unsuspecting animal to approach. When it did, the monkey would reach inside, clench a fist around the food, and try to pull it out. However, the narrow neck of the jar would stop the poor monkey from getting its hand out. It'd pull and pull, but to no avail. There was simply no way to get its hand out of the jar without releasing the food. Rather than letting go, though, the monkey would persevere, refusing to drop its dinner. The hunters would then approach and catch it to enjoy a meal of their own. Don't be like that monkey, warned the man. In life, to fight another day and grow as person, you must know when to quit, when to move on, and when to let go of whatever's holding you back. Sometimes you have to let go and give up what you have now in order to receive something better in the future. Don't let stubbornness be your downfall. 30. The Value of Money 
At the beginning of a new school year, a class teacher stands up in front of her students holding a $100 bill. She tells them, put your hands up if you want this money. Every hand in the room goes up, to which the teacher says, I'm going to give this money to someone here, but first, let me do this. She takes the bill and crumples it up in her hands before asking, who still wants it? The hands stay up. The teacher then drops the bill on the floor, stomps and grinds it into the ground and picks it back up. How about now? She asks again. The hands stay up. Class, I hope you see the lesson here. It didn't matter what I did to this money, you still wanted it because its value stayed the same. Even with its creases and dirtiness, it's still worth $100. She continues, It's the same with us. There will be similar times in your life when you're dropped, bruised, and muddied. Yet no matter what happens, you never lose your value. Life's hardships are inevitable and will all be put through the ringer at some point, often through no fault of our own. Don't let these challenges alter your feelings of self-worth. You'll always be enough. You have something unique and special to give and offer the world.